Good evening, Alexandra. Will you be just listening today, Alexandra? Good evening. Good evening. How are you today? A little tired. Tired. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. That's Friday. Do you work on weekends or you rest? No, it's still today. No, okay. no. It still is not the correct word um, until Friday. Oh, okay. You work until Friday, so you have weekends off. Yes. Oh, that's nice. I hope that you rest a lot on weekends. Thank you. And the rest of you, I see that Jose is, are you going to be only listening today? Okay, Alex, so you say, let's see. Okay, Alex, noted. Thank you for letting me know. Okay, so um, thank you for being on time, Manuel, Alexandra, Jose Enrique, Emerson, and Alex. Um, we're going to start today's class. I know that... Um, some of you will be just listening for different reasons. I'll try to continue with the program. So I hope that um, you can participate at some point during the class. So let me start sharing. Okay. Well, uh, yesterday we were studying and practicing with anything and um, nothing. So we studied the difference and how, to, when do we use anything? When do we use nothing? So uh, also we completed these sentences and we stop here in exercise six. It says um, rank the following tips to improve brand recognition being number one the most effective and number five will be the least effective um we have provide great customer service consistently remind your target market that you are actively doing business develop a heartfelt story that speaks to why you are in business provide value exceed their expectations and use the same same logo in all marketing materials so um this is going to be individual so you rank them from one to five and remember that one is the most effective and least is going to be the least effective then when you finish we're going to share your opinion this is per is it's like your um your point of view what do you think is the the most uh, effective and the least effective um to improve the brand recognition so it's just your personal there is no correct or incorrect answer it's just um what do you think to so, you know what do you think
Okay, volunteer to share. Me, teacher. Okay, thank you so much. What is your ranking? Well, the first one, it's uh, provide great customer service. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely, uh-huh. The second, provide value or exceed their expectations. The third, consistently remind your target market that you are actively doing business. Okay. The fourth, uh, develop a heartfelt story that speaks to why you are in business. And the last one, uh, five, use the same logo in all your marketing materials. Sounds really good. Thank you so much for sharing, Emerson. Great job. Thank you. Anybody else? Another volunteer? No more volunteers? Okay, now uh, the next thing that we have here is a uh, building vocabulary exercise. This is the following words describe the stages that customers go through as they build loyal loyalty a brand product or organization. Match these stages to their corresponding descriptions. So we have the stages here, advantage, presence, bonding, relevance, and performance. And give it time for you to work on that. And then we're going to check.
finished? Yes, teacher. Okay, would you like to share? Okay, the first one, advantage, it's for uh, customers are beginning to associate the brand with their emotions and with their emotion, with, with their sense of self. Mm -hmm. uh, second, presence, or presence or presence? That is presence. A uh, presence, okay. Okay, presence uh, is for customers are aware of your brand, but little else. Mm -hmm. uh, the three bonding is for consumers are determined that cost, advantage, and performance are all out levels that they're happy with. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, relevance it's for customers start to think about whether the brand meets their wants and needs okay and performance is for customers being comparing the brand with others to see whether it delivers on its potential that's okay thank you so much for sharing your answers Emerson um, uh, this Pyramid, I, I think it's not, um, well, we're going to skip that exercise. It's just to order the stages of brand loyalty. So um, that's not like a big deal. And uh, what well, I share with you uh, material and we're going to be pending this, just these two pages and we finish with the material. So. Are we going to stop for a while? So we're gonna do something different here. Okay. Okay, I sent this presentation since yesterday. Uh, we were practicing about the uses of, of anything and nothing. And uh, well, we're about to finish the section number four, which is the last one. We're just missing two pages. So in this um, missing classes, we're going to be practicing vocabulary, increasing our vocabulary. And if there is any topic that you would like to review, let me know so I can prepare material for you. And um, so yesterday we practiced nothing and anything. And also we've been with linking words or um, connectors. I know that this topic is very, very extensive and sometimes it's quite difficult to uh, use them since it's plenty of those words and sometimes it's like confusing and difficult to understand when to use them, but they are very important um, at this level. So we, 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 we need to start handling them since you are, um, you're going to an advanced level, so we need to uh, reinforce some topics like this one. So we have some linking words, and I'm not going to give you the whole list. You know that they um, they are used for, in this case, uh, for contrast. Some others are uh, to add information. Some others are to, um, they connect, um, similar ideas some of them are to to make comparisons etc but right now we're going to focus just in three which are the like the most common in order to show contrast and these three words are despite however and although uh, if you look for the definition despite means despite means a pesar de, however means, what does however means? De cualquier forma. Mm, similar, it's, mm. yeah, like de cualquier forma, sin embargo, sin embargo, 
all de cualquier forma, yes, is similar. And although it means a pesar de, igual que despite, pero tienen una diferencia, despite y although. Vamos a estar eh, estudiando cuáles son las diferencias. Like they, uh, el meaning, el significado de ellas, de despite and although, es el mismo. Ellas significan a pesar de, pero hay diferencias en cuanto a cuándo vamos a usar despite y cuándo vamos a usar although. Eh, volunteer to read the first slide. Volunteer to read. We use linking words. A volunteer. Me, teacher. Thank you, Marilyn. Linking words of contrast. Despite, however, and also. We use linking words to join ideas together when we're talking or writing. Something we want to link to ideas that are different from each other. For example, one is a positive idea and one is a negative idea. Or we want to link one idea to another one that is surprising or unexpected. We can use linking words like however, although, and despite to do this. Great. Thank you so much for reading, Marilyn. Now let's start with the first one. Although, who wants to read about although? Me, teacher. Thank you, Emerson. Um, although, we can use although at the beginning or in the middle of the sentence. It is used in front of a clause. A clause has at least a subject and a verb that agrees with the subject. Although the weather is bad, I love London. I love London, although the weather is bad. Okay, thank you so much for reading. Um, is there any question about the uses of although? Is there any question? No questions? Okay, let's move with the next one. Despite or in spite of, volunteer. Me teacher. Thank you, Alexandra. We use despite or in spite of before a noun or a gerund. It can also go in the middle or at the beginning of a sentence. Despite and in spite of mean exactly the same thing. You can choose whichever one you like. If you want to use despite or in spite of before a clause, you need to add the fact that. Um, the rest of the sentence, I read too. Teacher? Yes, it's... um. Okay. I love London despite the bad weather. I love London in spite of the bad weather. Despite the bad weather, I love London. In spite of the bad weather, I love London. Despite the fact that the weather is bad, I love London. In spite of the fact that the weather is bad, I love London. I love London despite the fact that the weather is bad. I love London in despite of the fact that the weather is bad. All right. Thank you so much for reading, Alexandra. As you see, um, they, the, the, that is the difference. I was, um, I was speaking to you before um, we begin reading. Uh, a diferencia, decimos que despite y alto significan lo mismo, es como decir a pesar de, pero la diferencia es 
como vemos acá, eh, vamos a usar despite o in spite of, que es lo mismo, antes de un noun o de un gerundio. Eh, no podemos usar although antes de un noun o gerund como está ahí. Entonces, esa es la diferencia de, de ellos. Significan lo mismo, pero eh, despite o in spite of lo vamos a usar before a noun o a gerund. Eh, So, por ejemplo, en la primera, I love London despite the bad weather. The bad weather es el, el, el noun en esta. No tenemos eh, con jargon ahorita, pero vamos a tener ejercicios más adelante. Eh, como ven, significan exactamente lo mismo. Despite or in spite of. Acuérdense que hay sinónimos o, o, o esto para evitar repetición. Porque es eh, en un párrafo. Eh, a veces las ideas eh, puede sonar como muy repetitivo eh, o estar usando la misma palabra, eh, pues ahí tenemos. Pueden usarlos, intercambiarlos y tienen el mismo significado. Despite or in spite of. Eh, no hay diferencia en el significado, como ya les mencionaba anteriormente. Y eh, si quieren usar despite or in spite of before a clause, cuando mencionamos clause, ¿a qué nos referimos? ¿Qué es una cláusula? Hoy. Una cláusula es una oración. Siempre que vean que dice clause, es una oración. Um, entonces, eh, si lo vamos a utilizar antes de una oración, entonces hay que agregar the fact that. Así como eh, por aquí habían una. Aquí, despite the fact that the weather is bad, I love London. Está al inicio del, está antes de la oración. Entonces, al estar antes de una oración, hay que agregarle the fact that. Aquí, por ejemplo, eh, era como que estoy repitiendo la misma oración y creo que me preguntó por qué parecía que era la misma, pero eh, hay algunas diferencias. Por ejemplo, aquí, despite the fact that the weather is bad, coma, I love London. Y eh, ven la, la otra. Quiero ver. ¿Dónde estaba? Ah, I love London. Despite the fact that the weather is bad. Entonces pongamos atención acá. Voy con la spotlight. Um, acá. Despite the, the fact that the weather is bad. Aquí hay una coma. Esa cláusula digamos que es la dependiente. Esa oración es dependiente. ¿Por qué? Porque no tiene eh, sentido ella sola. Queda como incompleta la idea. Queda inconclusa. Si solo le digo... Despite the fact that the weather is bad, es como que um, a pesar de que el clima está malo, ¿qué, ¿qué pasa? Entonces necesita otra para tener sentido o significado. I love London. ¿Ok? Entonces de, puedo decir I love London y es una oración completa con significado. No queda como la idea inconclusa si solo digo I love London. Entonces esa que se llama independiente, ese tipo de oraciones, las que tienen sentido ella sola y no necesita eh, otra oración para tener significado o sentido. Entonces, cuando la que les decía, la que no tiene sentido sola o que es la dependiente va al principio, entonces se separan por una coma, estas oraciones. Pero cuando la, la, la que tiene sentido, por ejemplo, I love London, va al principio, no va la coma uh, antes de despite the fact that. No se utiliza coma antes de poner el conector. Uh, I love London despite the fact that the weather is bad. Esa es la diferencia dependiendo a dónde lo, lo coloquemos en cuanto a puntuación. ¿Quedó claro? ¿O hay preguntas? Entonces, eh, siempre que vaya a ir al, al inicio o antes de una cláusula, despite, hay que agregarle the fact that. Si no, pues solo se deja despite. 
como ven aquí, I love London, despite the, the bad weather. And let's move. However, I volunteer to read about however. Uh, me teacher. Thank you, Manuel. Okay, however, we use although and despite and despite of to connect to clause in the same sentences on the other. Han, han, however, we isn't used to connect to clause instead. We usually put the two ideas in two separate sentences. We put however in the second sentence and we can put it at the beginning at the end or after the subject. I love London. However, the weather is bad. I love London. The weather, however, is bad. I love London. The weather is bad, however. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much for reading. So, en esta, pues, vemos la diferencia. Ya veíamos que eh, despite en all dos eh, significa lo mismo. La diferencia es eh, que despite eh, o in spite of va a ir antes de una eh, noun or a gerund en, y también, pues, con lo de las comas ya lo explicábamos. Eh, entonces, también although y despite lo vamos a usar para conectar dos oraciones eh, en dos oraciones, ¿verdad? Dos cláusulas en la misma oración. Por otra parte, es on the other hand, no sé por qué no lo puso tu, junto, on the other hand, however, is and used to connect two clauses. No lo utilizamos para conectar dos cláusulas, sino que es, es poner dos ideas separadas en dos. Se separan por un punto, como ven ahí. Eh, y se puede poner pues ya sea a, al principio de la, de, la, de la oración, ¿verdad? Que está separando. Uh, I love London. However, the weather is bad. I love London. Aquí hay un punto. The weather, however, is bad. I love London. Punto. The weather is bad. However. Entonces se lo podemos poner al principio, en el medio o al final. Eh, so, pero sí, son como dos ideas que están separadas. Por eso ven ahí el punto. Ok, esa sería la otra diferencia. Y eh, tenemos ese es linking word exercise despite, however, en although en este enlace. Voy a dejar de compartir un ratito. Y... Ok, I sent this, ya se las mandé por WhatsApp, pero igual voy a agarrar el link para enviárselos por aquí en el meeting chat. Okay, there you have the link where you can, um, you will find exercises to put in practice the, the uses of despite, however, and although. Uh, we're going to do this in group. Lo vamos a hacer en grupo. Pues voy a abrir el breakup room. Uh, si pueden participar, uh, se pueden unir. Uh, voy a estar pendiente uh, de mover a quienes queden solos en algún room donde no estén participando. Voy a habilitar antes el share screen, antes de que se me olvide. So you can do it in group. Eh, pues ahí van a eh, complementar, ¿verdad? Al menos eh, tal vez uno puede estar compartiendo y escribir en lo que otros pueden revisar lo que acabamos de estar leyendo para eh, poder responder y completar los ejercicios. So let me get into two breakout rooms. Okay, there we go.
I cannot I cannot put it here. Somebody else can share it. Sorry, I can I connect to my cell phone. I know that anybody else. I from the cell phone too. Have you access to the link already? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to share a screen. Okay, and I'll give you the remote control. Who wants to control the screen? Someone is from a computer. Mm, not me. I'm on the cell phone. You're on the cell phone. Um, would you like to try if you're able to control the screen? Okay, I could try. Miss, I have the 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 same cup. Give me five. <laughs> what? You have the same cup. Oh, the same cup. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give me five. <laughs> they are beautiful. The um in the first one I think is despite. Despite okay. Mm. Despite. Despite the rain, we still went to the park. Uh huh. That's correct. Excellent. Okay. The second one. I think the second one is alto, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think uh, two is alto. Okay. Alto. Alto, yes. You have a germ raining. Um. I don't know why the cable goes closing. H? Uh -oh. oh. Okay. The third, it was raining. Mm. However. However. Yes. Excellent. Yeah. However, because they are separate, it was raining. Y tenemos un punto. However, okay. check it. Excellent. Okay. John bought the watch. The fact that it was expensive. Mm. Despite. Mm. No. Or in spite of, I think. Uh huh. Despite mm. of. Uh huh. Porque va a iniciar la la otra hasta before the clause. Uh huh. Sería despite. Despite. Mm. Okay. Despite the fact that. It was expensive. All right, there you go. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, scroll down. Puede scroll down o lo hago yo. No, aquí quiero intentar yo. Ok. Está bien porque así es. The... Excellent. There you go. A mi poquito. However. However. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Separate sentences. John Bata watch. Period. However, it was expensive. Uh, can you please scroll down? It's Sorry. very difficult. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, it was expensive. John bought the watch. Please buy. Buy, yeah. Spite. Check. Mm. Mm -hmm. Although, although it was expensive, can be. Yeah, it rings more auto. Yes. Y auto puede ir al principio, al medio, al final. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I finished the homework. It Uh, no. Mm. Although. However. <laughs> oh, however. I think it's however. Mm. Okay. Try with uh, however. Okay. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So I finished the homework. However, too. It's the same, <laughs> it's the same right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Mm. Auto. Mm, uh -huh. Auto. No. Auto. Yeah, because it's not take easy. Auto. That's right. Mm -hmm. mm. Wait. Yes. Um, the fact that it wasn't easy, I finished the homework. Mm. It's not however. Mm, however, the fact. No, solo hay una que se oye, se usa con the fact that cuando va al inicio de una cláusula. Despite. 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 Uh -huh. uh -huh. Uh, can you scroll it, please? Okay. Okay. She went for a long walk and being cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, no, uh, despite. Despite, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, despite yes, uh huh, but it's time on journey. I been she was called, she went for a long walk. Yes. However, well, I don't know. Alto, alto, yeah. Alto, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs>
Okay, she was cold. She went for a long walk. Mm -hmm. Okay. Man. However. How? The restaurant has a good reputation. The food was terrible. Mm. However. However. No, although. Yeah. Mm. Although. Although. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? <laughs> I think it's however because it's a... Uh... No, I'm not sure. <laughs> However, because uh, I don't know, it's a contradiction for the. the yeah, first. No, yeah, it's it's it's. However, because it's in the middle of two sentences. Eh, the hay un punto. Hay un punto. Ajá. Hay un punto ahí. Es como que son dos oraciones separadas. No está como agree con el mismo sujeto. Esa es otra diferencia de however. Estamos hablando del restaurante y luego de la comida. Es como que no es como un agreement with the same subject, a diferencia de los demás. Entonces, por eso vamos a utilizar however. however. Uh -huh. Como dos oraciones separadas y no hay agreement con el sujeto. Ahí está el punto, however. Uh -huh. The restaurant good restaurant's good reputation, the food was terrible. Although, although mm, despite, 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 despite the reputation. Despite the restaurant good reputation, the food was terrible. Yeah, despite. Yeah, right. <laughs> ah, the skateboard. Peor que los teclados de la escana. Ay, no me recuerdo de eso. Ah, it's fine. It's fine. Well, last one. The restaurant has a good reputation. The food was terrible. In spite of. Mm. Mm. The yeah, word. I think it's spider. In, in spite of. I think it's Aldo. Mm. Although the restaurant has a good reputation, the food was terrible. Mm. Okay, let's try. Aldo. Oh. Aldo. Yeah, you're right. So you finish the exercise. Yes. Excellent. You did it very good. Creo que fueron pocas en las que dudaron, ¿verdad? Pocas, pocas. Yes. En las que sí dudaron de cuál yes. era la respuesta. Fueron bien poquitas. Eh, ¿qué, ¿Qué piensan? Eh, a mí me gusta saber cuál es la opinión porque, bueno, vamos probando a ver qué funciona para el grupo. Les decía poner la información, ir de a poquito, eh, con unas cuantas, ¿verdad? Porque si nos ponemos a hacer, estas son que de contraste, estas para comparar, vamos a poner también una de, para um, dar, eh, como agregar información. Entonces es como que se nos revuelve ese montón de cosas en la cabeza. Si ya con tres batallamos y que las tres son para contrast, estas tres son para contraste. Entonces, eh, no sé qué piensan, qué les ha parecido este ejercicio le, con la presentación y el link y todo eso. Eh, a mí me gusta esa modalidad así de ver como primero lo, la explicación de cómo se usan y después hacer ejercicio. Siento que se me queda como un poco más la, la información. Uh -huh. Y quizás irlo haciendo por poquito, ¿verdad? Y que sean como de la misma categoría. O... Uh -huh. Sí, justo así. Ok, ok. Esto, bueno, pues... 
para probar solo hice estas para hoy porque pues eh, a veces ya me ha pasado que hago la presentación, rebusco material y todo y de repente veo que no funciona o que se están confundiendo mucho, que les está costando o que batallen. Entonces me toca hacer otra para el siguiente día porque no funcionó. Entonces para el lunes le voy a hacer otros quizás dos, pero en separadas, ¿ok? para que practiquemos así como hicimos con esta. Eh, de todos modos, ahí les queda el link y ya les voy a mandar el material eh, de donde saqué estos ejercicios y pues para el lunes le voy a poner más de estas. Eh, no sé si habría algún otro tema que quieren que repasemos o nos quedamos con este para terminar el, los, los dos clases que nos faltan. Yo creo que este, porque creo que esas palabras de conexión es lo más, lo que más me, me confunde, lo que se me dificulta más. Ok, good. Thank you so much, Alexandra. ¿Y los demás? ¿Hay algún otro tema o quieren que sigamos el mismo con los conectos? Yo quisiera otro, otro, seguir con este, mismo, con este mismo tema, porque sí, eh, creo que no me ha quedado muy claro. Quisiera un poco más de ejercicio o oración, de verdad, para practicar más. Ok, ok, good. Ok, eh, voy a dejar un rato de compartir, vamos a ir a la sección principal para chequear asistencia y luego pues vamos a crear unos ejercicios ya que tenemos la, ¿cómo se llama? La teoría, ya practicamos con ejemplos, ahora vamos a hacer nuestras propias oraciones, pero después de chequear asistencia. So thank you so much for your participation and I will see you in the main section. Okay. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so thank you so much for your participation in the breakout rooms with the connectors. Um, so on Monday, we will have more exercise like this one, probably two blocks of the same kind of exercises. Right now, let me go ahead and share the material with you since I know some of you are just listening and we're not able to join the breakout rooms but I will send you the material with the key, um, with the answer key so that you can review it. One second. Okay, I already sent the material with the exercises in case that you want to review it. So I know that uh, many of you were not able to join the rooms because you're going to be just like listening. Uh, yes, I already sent it into WhatsApp. I will send the link as well. I sent the link, can you check if you receive it? Yes, teacher. 
Okay, great. There is uh, the first page in the document, the PDF has the exercise that we complete. And in the second page, you have the answer key if you want to check um, in work, if you want to print it, or if you were not able to be in the breakout room to practice. So you have there the, the PDF file, you can print it and try to solve them, or you can um, do it by using the link there. And, and you can check the answer there as well. So we're going to proceed to check attendance. Stay present as soon as you hear your name. Let's see, Abigail Elizabeth Flores. Present, teacher. Thank you. Alex Enrique Lemos. Present, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Emilio Cotto. Present, teacher. Thank you. Elizabeth Stephanie Vasquez. Emerson Alexander Lopez. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto Acuña. Present. Gertrudis Aymara Baquerano. Guadalupe Alexandra Calixto. Present. Thank you. Hazel Vanessa Menjiva. Jose Enrique Pineda. Julissa Yamilet Villalta. Carla Ivania Anaya. Present teacher. Thank you. Luis Javier Castillo. Present, Miss. Thank you. Matiel Esau Garcia. Present teacher. Thank you. Manuel Alexander Vasquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Marilyn Alejandra Grande. Present. Thank you. Mario Ernesto Ramirez. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra Martinez. Víctor Noé Bonilla. Present. Thank you. Vidal Byron Ruiz. Present teacher. Thank you. William Alexander Rosales. Okay. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Enrique. Let me continue sharing the screen. Okay, now that we studied uh, and practice with the linking word of contrast, despite, however, and although, let's review and try to create our own examples. Uh, we said that although, we can use although at the beginning or in the middle of a sentence is used in front of a clause uh, with at least subject and verb that agrees with the subject. 
And we have the two examples. Uh, although the weather is bad, I love London. Or we said, I love London. Although the weather is bad. Um, let's write a couple of examples using although, and then let's share them with the class. I'll give you time for you to write them either in your notebook or you can write it in the meeting chat. Uh, teacher, sorry, how many sentences? Uh, you can write one or two sentences. Are you ready? No, I think no. that two is okay. <laughs> two sentences is okay. Okay.
Okay, I share my example with you. I wrote it in the meeting chat. My husband goes for groceries, um, although he doesn't like it. What are your examples? What are your sentences? Well, my sentence is, um, although I'm tired, I need to finish this project tonight. Okay, very good. Only one? Or do you have another one? I have another one. Um, despite the heavy rain, they continued with the outdoor picnic. Okay, you did one with other and with the spite. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. Emerson, any other volunteer? Is there any other volunteer? No more examples with Aldo? Oh. Yes, teacher. Oh, well, you work with Despite also. Despite his busy schedule, he always makes time for a good party at night. Okay. <laughs> Okay, despite his limited experience in front of cameras, he performed exceptionally well in notice. Uh, well, the notice, uh, the news. The ah, news. The news, yes, sorry. <laughs> the news on TV. Okay, in spite of her depth, she has. She has, yes. Is she has an expensive vacation in Cancun? Okay. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. In spite of the heavy traffic, I arrived at the meeting on time. That's great. That's, that is the best example. <laughs> in spite of the heavy traffic, I arrived at the meeting on time. Great. Thank you so much. You did a very good job with this one. So I said that Emerson and Alexandra, you work with Aldo and despite or in spite of. So that's very good. Anybody else? Do we have more examples? No. Okay. So let's work examples using however. We use um Remember, that is the explanation that we already uh, studied on the PowerPoint. We use all the despite of to connect two clauses in the same sentence. On the other hand, however, isn't used to connect two clauses. Instead, we usually put them two ideas in two separate sentences. We put however in the second sentence and we can put it at the beginning, at the end, or after the subject, but it's going to be always in the second sentence. Let's work two, three, five examples with however, as many as you can. Remember, the more you practice, the easier it gets.
Okay, Alexandra already shared her example. It says, I love El Salvador. However, the traffic is heavy. Yes, that's a nightmare every day. <laughs> I love my dog. My allergies, however, are annoying. Is that true? Are you allergic to your dog? No, no. <laughs> It's only for the example. Okay, okay. Thank you. That's nice to to know that it was just for for uh example purposes. <laughs> it would be really sad. <laughs> okay, and you did a very nice job with proper punctuation. Very good. Let's wait for another couple of examples. Let's see. Anybody else with examples using however? Uh, me, teacher. Thank you so much. Uh, although it was a long journey, they decided to drive to explore the country. Mm -hmm. uh, with however? Um, well, I only made two with using although. <laughs> Okay, not a problem. What is the other one? We planned to go camping for the weekend. Although the weather forecast predicted rain, we decided to proceed with our adventure. Excellent. Excellent examples. Thank you so much, Emerson. Okay. Uh, the topic is difficult, said Manuel. The topic is difficult. However, I'm getting the gist of it. Mm -hmm. I couldn't solve the riddle. However, I tried hard. I tried hard. We need to switch it up. Excellent. And yes, uh, that is good that the topic is difficult. However, you are doing your best. Yeah. So you're doing the best you can, and that is fantastic. So um, we're going to continue with uh, the connectors, these linking words for next week. Remember that we only have uh, two classes left. Monday and Tuesday, we finish. And important to remember the so it the, we have three, um, Tenemos eh, tres requisitos, okay? So you have three requirements in order to get your certificate. One is the attendance. Eh, la, la, yo creo que con la asistencia no tendrían problema. La mayoría si, siempre ha estado conectado, eh, al menos, bueno, como oyentes, eh, por dificultades con el trabajo, eh, el horario, el tráfico, etcétera, pero se han conectado. Así es que yo creo que la... La mayoría va bien en ese sentido, mínimo es el 80%. Eh, lo otro es la plataforma, por favor, trabajen en la plataforma. Seguimos atrasados, bastantes compañeros con la, la plataforma. Tiene que estar terminada, eh, por lo menos hasta la sección 5, eh, perdón, eh, 4 ya para el lunes y el, el midterm todavía puede esperar para el martes a medianoche para pues evitar algún inconveniente con su reinscripción al siguiente módulo o pues eh, la obtención de su certificado eh, como pues no sé verdad si vayan a seguir o no entonces pero sí para el certificado we have attendance eh, la cómo se llama la plataforma y lo tercero que es la encuesta de satisfacción que ya creo que la mayoría están familiarizados con este, este último requisito. Los que no, pues eh, esta encuesta de satisfacción se hace el último día de clase, eh, regularmente eh, entre 8 y 20, pero les confirmaría el horario. Traten por favor el martes de estar conectados eh, a, a tiempo a, para que puedan hacer la encuesta de satisfacción. Esos tres son los requisitos para obtener su certificado. Emerson? Um, well, just a question. Mm -hmm. uh, you will be continuing the next level, the level four? Uh, 
And that's a good question. <laughs> um, I'm really, um, I, I don't know why, but I've been with you like for, I think this is this uh, fourth, the fourth module that I'm with this group. Um, este es el cuarto módulo que estoy con, con este grupo. Eh, normalmente solo nos dejan unos eh, dos módulos, a veces solo un módulo y nos cambian. So, es bastante probable que sí, pero como le digo, no, no tenemos como seguridad de eh, si nos van a dejar con el mismo grupo o nos van a rotar. Ah, ok. Pero sí, ya, ya este es el cuarto módulo con, con este grupo. Uh -huh. Así es que no, no sé. <ríe> Lo más que había estado con un grupo eran seis meses con un presencial. Pero, ajá. So, I don't know. Nos avisan, creo que, que una, cuatro días, a veces tres días antes nos avisan. Uh -huh. eh, any other question? Eh, igual, pues ahí ustedes eh, van a tener un espacio donde les, eh, en, la, en la encuesta de satisfacción hay un espacio eh, donde ustedes pueden hacer sus comentarios, ¿verdad? Si consideran que sea sano un cambio de facilitador, ahí lo pueden hacer. That's, uh, si consideran que un cambio sería bueno o si desean seguir o cualquier cosa, eh, la pueden, tienen un espacio ahí donde pueden escribir. Eh, comentarios, sugerencias, etcétera. Pero sí es muy importante que no vayan a perderse el, el martes para hacer la, la encuesta de satisfacción juntos. Esto, los resultados de la encuesta son totalmente eh, privados. Eh, eh, se, no se revela ninguna información, ¿verdad? O sea, como decir, este, yo quisiera que, que no sé, que, que haya... Creo que el maestro tiene que hacer más ejercicios de tal y tal, eh, no sé, metodología o algo. ¿Usted lo sugiere? Nos hacen la sugerencia, sí. Nos dicen eh, en la encuesta, todo bien, excepto por tal punto que se sugiere que, um, no sé, que, que utilicen más recursos de como los que usamos últimamente, ¿verdad? Los enlaces y esto. Entonces, no nos dicen Emerson pidió, ¿verdad? <ríe> que haga más trabajos con ejercicios de, de enlaces así. No nos dicen el nombre de la persona. Pero sí nos dicen la sugerencia, ¿verdad? O fulano dijo de que el maestro, pues, está chateando mucho mientras está en clase y lo deja por ahí a su, a, a su suerte. Entonces, nos lo hacen saber, pero no nos dicen quién dijo eso. Así que, pues ahí pueden poner eh, cualquier comentario y sugerencia que sea para mejorar, ¿verdad? Si es para mejorar, pues nos lo hacen saber para que nosotros hagamos algún cambio eh, que les va a beneficiar, ¿verdad? Y tomemos en cuenta la sugerencia. A veces son cosas de que eh, a veces uno igual sin, sin, sin tenerlo muy... Eh, eh, porque les digo, trato siempre de tener el cuidado porque tenemos ciertas limitaciones y eso también tenganlo en, en mente, ¿verdad? Eh, que digan, no, es que la teacher nunca nos puso una canción, ¿verdad? Un ejercicio de listening con canción. No, es que no quiera. Yo quisiera ponerlos aquí a cantar en inglés, que practiquen y, y pronunciación, vocabulario de canciones y todo eso. Pero no podemos por el hecho de que eh, los videos se publican en YouTube y nos pueden eh, bajar los videos por las cuestiones de derechos de autor. Entonces, todo material que vamos a proyectar, tenemos que tener en cuenta que no tenga ninguna canción de fondo. Incluso ya se nos han bajado videos porque algún estudiante está oyendo por ahí, no sé, bronco, y tiene el micrófono encendido. Entonces, la canción de bronco suena en el video, ¡pum!, nos lo bajaron y hay que repetir esa clase. Entonces hay cosas de ese cierto tipo de limitaciones que tenemos que no es porque nosotros no querramos, sino que es por la modalidad en la que están ustedes. Así que eso también tómenlo en cuenta antes de, de cualquier eh, sugerencia o comentario que vayan a hacer, ¿verdad? Porque como les repito, a veces no es cuestión de que nosotros no querramos, sino que es la modalidad. Ya en lo presencial ya tenemos más libertad, pues cuando las clases son presenciales, pero también entendemos que hoy en día, por la pesadilla de la que mencionamos a diario del tráfico, 
por lo cansado de sus trabajos, que a veces incluso siguen trabajando y están conectados en clase, eh, ustedes optan por la modalidad en línea. Nosotros eh, tratamos de hacer todo lo posible porque la clase sea lo más parecido a una clase presencial. Eh, llámese que hacemos grupos, eh, tenemos el uso de la pizarrita, eh, presentamos diapositiva, eh, buscamos material adicional para que ustedes tengan más chance con más ejercicio, etc. Sin embargo, cualquier sugerencia siempre es bienvenida porque a veces hacemos tanto lo mismo que eh, no caemos como en cuenta de que hay algo otras actividades que ustedes pueden sugerir que hagamos y si está en las posibilidades eh, dentro del programa y de la modalidad, claro que lo vamos a, a ejecutar con mucho gusto. Y el motivo de hacer la encuesta a todos estando en la clase es porque esta solo hay chance de hacerla una vez. Si se mandó mal o se puso la información mal, eh, la encuesta es rechazada y no hay este, posibilidad de volverla a hacer. Y la encuesta es uno de los requisitos para que ustedes opten a su certificado. Así que aunque reciban el link antes para realizar la encuesta, eh, no la vayan a hacer. Procuren hacerla en, durante la clase. Lo vamos a hacer regularmente. Se toma tipo 8 y 20 por ahí. Pero es importante que estén conectados temprano. Uh, and that's about the last class, which is going to be next Tuesday. So we're going to uh, continue with our material from Insafor. Now that we finish with the connectors for today's class, uh, as I told you before, on Monday we will continue with connectors little by little. Maybe today we work with three connectors. Uh, Monday we're going to have a uh, some more time because we're going to finish today the section number four. So Monday is going to be just for review and Tuesday is as well, only for review. So uh, we're going to be working the connector with the rest of the classes, maybe six or nine connector in, a, in, in each class. But right now we're going to continue here. We stop in the, uh, this is page 39. This is where we stop. And now our exercise four is to think of a brand you are very attached to and one to which you are familiar but not attached. Then use the descriptions of the brand loyalty pyramid to identify where in the pyramid are you in respect of this brand. Use the analysis questions as reference. And uh, this one, the one that has this heart, is uh, for the brand that you are really attached to. It can be, um, the brand can be a clothing brand, or it can be, uh, I don't know, any kind of groceries for, um, for your house, or devices, uh, um, device brand, etc. you name it. The questions that you're going to use for your analysis is how long have you been a customer of? If it is a device, maybe Samsung brand, for example. Um, uh, the brand, uh, what are the features you love of? Samsung cell phone brand, for example. Uh, would you recommend Samsung? For example, again, brand to friends or families, uh, would you be willing to pay more to enjoy more benefits from X brand, the one that you uh, that you select? And remember, it can be any uh, of any kind of brand: clothing, uh, food, devices, uh, ho household appliance, etc. And then for the for the next for the brand that you're just familiar but not touch. We have these questions. How long have you been a customer of X brand? Are you satisfied with X brand? Would you recommend X brand um, the, to family or friends? Would you be willing to pay more to enjoy more benefits from X brand? So we are going to write the analysis for the two brands and then we're going to share with the class.
It's like writing a review. It's similar to a review.
Have you finished? Well, I have finished, but I don't know if I'm I am right with this uh, survey. Okay. Uh, can you share? Well, for example, I I use. Uh, how long have you been a customer of uh, Nokia cell phone brand? Ah, oh, yeah, I have heard of it. Uh huh. So uh, I have been a customer since 2005. Mm -hmm. uh, the second, uh, what are the three features you love of a Nokia cell phone brand? Well, the stability, the ringtone maker, and the snake game. And that is the brand you are attached to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a telephone brand, and it's called Honor. And this is uh, the one that kind of a couple of years ago, it was known as Nokia. Yeah, the, the the I think they they changed the name or uh -huh. Huawei Huawei by acquire this this brand Nokia and change it to Honor. Okay. Uh huh. Uh well, would you recommend uh well Honor brand? I highly recommend it. And says, would you be willing to pay more to enjoy more benefits from Honor brand? Probably not because, well, I am satisfied with the current features. Mm -hmm. Okay. I only, uh -huh. only, only have that. And you didn't work with the brand that you were not really attached to. No, only, only, I only work with the. With a brand where I really like, the really like touched. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for sharing. Anybody else? What do you have? You can share. Uh, if you only finish the first part with the brand that you're attached to, that's okay. If you finish both, that's okay too. Any other volunteer? Okay, no more volunteer. Yes, in my case, I work in the brand that attached me. Um, is it's a brand. The brand is Vitrinea. Uh, I have been customer uh, around one year ago. Uh, the three features that uh, makes me love the brand is I love the marketing and the concept. Uh, from the brand i i like uh, the quality of the clothes because this is a um i a uh, brand that, that sells uh, second hand clothes and uh, i love the promotions because you can uh, you can find uh, find a for example a, a skirt or a blouse that have very quality high, high quality. quality okay mm -hmm. and of course i recommend this brand to my friends and my family because the promotions are very accessible accessible okay and I will pay more to enjoy more benefits and I think the price are very good and if this brand um have a or have more a uh, high price I think um it's okay for me because the quality and the concept attach me Okay, so between there, is this an online store or? Yes, 
online store. Okay, and it sells secondhand clothes. Yes. In good conditions, a brand of uh, high quality. High quality. Very good brand. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's nice. And you work only with the brand that you're attached to. Yes. Okay. That's very nice. Thank you so much for sharing. I have never heard of that um, website or the web store. That's interesting. Yes, I recommend you. Upload okay. the app. <laughs> it's an app. Yes, it's an app. Mm -hmm. And I think the last week, uh, they opened a new store in Metro Centro. Okay. A new physical store. Oh, that's nice. Thank you so much for the recommendation. I will take a look. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody else? Is there anybody else who would like to share? Okay, so we had our participation uh, speaking about the uh, cell phone brand, there is a clothing brand or a store, a clothing store. And that's nice. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, so with this, I think that this is... Uh, now compare the analysis with two classmates. Okay, so we uh we talk about different things, cell phone brand and clothing brand. And those two analyses were really complete. You covered everything that was expected to. And uh, uh well, we did just the first part and the last part that we need to cover in order to finish the section number. Um or it says the reading part, it's an excerpt about Mac Cosmetics and Amazon Prime's loyalty program. A volunteer to read the paragraph? Me teacher. Thank you, Martin. Okay, um, Mac Cosmetics, a brand by Stella Lauder, has a loyalty program for online shoppers, and it features three tires. The first tie, tire, or tier. Tier, tier, uh, tier. Tiers. Okay. The first tier is called seduced. To join this tier, you don't need to make a purchase. You just need to sign up in the web page. Perks in this tier include early access to limited edition products. Tier two is called Devoted. You get access to this tier by spending $150 or more in a year. There is also early access to salad collections, complimentary express makeup application, and more. Tier three is named Obsessed. For customers who spend more than $500 per year on products, members of this tier get to be the first to shop in certain collections and also get complimentary services. Mac keeps customers engaged and the tiers keep customers motivated and move the company to get more exclusive content. See you. Yes, please. Amazon Prime for $99 a year. Amazon Prime offers not only the free shipping, but also offer benefits such as live streaming music, movies, and TV shows, storage for digital photos, and more. Benefit of this loyalty program can be exceeded the annual fee for those who take full advantage of the membership. In return, members get a host of benefits ranging for free next day delivery and returns to access to the Kindle Lending Library to unlimited st streaming of videos and music. For many Prime members, the initial interest in Prime is 
piqued by the promise of free next day delivery. If you purchase something from Amazon every month, Day Prime will save most people money over the course of the year. All right. Thank you so much for reading, Emerson. And this is the last part. And uh, then you have this exercise to discuss about the reading and uh, about vocabulary. I think that this reading is uh, the vocabulary is very friendly. Probably a new word would be tear, right? Tear. Tear, yeah. Uh -huh. Tear it's is like... uh, nivel. Okay. Okay, yeah. So it tiene como tres niveles de, de, de en que se puede eh, inscribir. Like, uh, eh, en el primero, pues no necesita hacer alguna compra, pero depende de cuánto compre, así es el nivel eh, en el que se puede eh, um, como eh, inscribir y gozar de los beneficios según las compras de las personas. Entonces son a uh, nivel that is tier. And well, that was basically it. And with this, we finish the section number four. Remember, Monday and Tuesday is going to be review and try to complete the platform as soon as possible. That's it for today. I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy and uh, see you on Monday. Thank you, teacher. See you. I see you. Have a good weekend. Thank you, teacher. Have a nice night. Mm, the same.